Hi, and welcome to the August edition of the Marine Professional, your monthly magazine from the IMRST. Our lead story this month looks at the fact that offshore vessels are actually going through um, a redesign in order to cope with an extended lifespan of up to 50 years. Now, as you well know, normally we would expect a 25 to 35 year lifespan for most vessels. And so adding on another almost 20 years uh, can really affect um, the way in which they need to be designed to cope with stresses um, in such rough climates as the Bering Sea um, and other offshore installations. In this month's interview section, Batsila India Chief Kimo Kotamaki actually talks about how the manufacturer is coping in quite a challenging market. Not only is the Indian offshore and shipbuilding market actually shrinking a little bit, which was their prime objective when they set up over there, but the company itself has had to get rid of some stuff and restructure a little bit because there were some irregularities uh, that they noticed being undertaken by local staff. And so we get into the, into the nitty gritty um, of this challenging market and how the OEM is coping. I'm also particularly excited by this month's Vessel Focus. We look at the Norwegian hybrid ferry named Vision of the Fjords. Uh, it's a fantastic design. Uh, it, runs on, use, it uses distillates, so diesel, but also battery power to reduce its environmental impact. Uh, and it also boasts a really interesting design where you sort of have a slope that goes up and so uh, passengers on the ferry when they're going through the beautiful fjords are actually able to pretend that they're walking up a hill which I think is a very innovative design concept. Uh, the hull of the vessel is um, carbon fibre and so this is going to yield some really interesting results in terms of uh, fuel efficiency and also uh, a drastic reduction of emissions. One of the other issues that we talk about in this edition of the magazine is, of course, the IMO uh, Ballast Water Convention. Now, with ratification hopefully uh, to materialise by the end of this year, with the world tonnage just a smidge under the required 35%, the question that we have asked not just manufacturers but also ship owners is, are they actually ready uh, to cope with this when it comes into force? And what are the first steps that they will do? An article that I really found fascinating was our section of marine archaeology, where we look at how climate change and weather and species are affecting the shipwrecks off the coast of England. Uh, I think you'd really enjoy reading it, particularly if you're interested in either conservation or marine science. As always, we're very eager to have you share your thoughts with us for our Marine Murmur section. Now, this month's discussion question is all about the Brexit, and what we want to know is, has the Brex do you feel that the Brexit is actually going to impact your industry sector, and if so, how? Our poll question um, is, should NGOs that have inconsultative status with the IMO be obligated to support its work on the Hong Kong Convention and the efforts being made to improve um, the lives of shipbreakers? Uh, I'd be really keen to hear your thoughts on both of these and of course they will, the, your answers will be printed in the September edition of the magazine which will receive bonus distribution at SMM. Um, I'd just like to remind you that we're always happy to hear from our readers and you can get in touch with us using our email which is marine at caspianmedia.com or of course if you're really quite internet savvy you can find us on Twitter and we are at the Marine Pro. We look forward to hearing from you. And we hope you enjoyed the edition as much as we enjoyed working on it.